shot and it's a wonderful shot and it brings up the first This is Brian Lara with Wired 868 Um, well, first looking back, what stands out for you about the 2017 competition and how the teams approached it? Well, I, I think the most important um, part of the CPL, or the most successful part of the CPL, is the, the, the fan participation. I think uh, throughout the Caribbean, the crowds have been tremendous. Um, anybody that's playing a home game, be it in Jamaica, St. Kitts, St. Lucia, Trinidad and Tobago, um, you find that the crowd came out. Um, from someone that played cricket in the you know, in the 90s and a little bit of, of the 80s, to see such a reaction for regional games is tremendous. We had it for Test Cricket, yes, we had it for One Day Internationals, but this is Jamaica versus Trinidad and Tobago, Barbados versus St. Lucia. And uh, that's what T20 have brought. Um, the players, of course, have been exciting. The fact that you have four or five international players on the ground in each team lends, it, lends itself to an international feel. But I'm also, I also think that the local players, the regional players, are the ones that are actually carrying the leagues. Because we've got very good players. We've got actually players that are most wanted around the world. You know, the Chris Gaylo, Karen Pollard, Dwayne Bravo, Sunil Narayan. All these guys are players that are top players in, in other franchise teams around the world. So the cricket is of a very high quality. Um, the pitches were pretty good. Unfortunately, it's a little bit of a part of the year where there's, you know, weather interruptions. But, um, you know, somehow we seem to get in that three hours that's needed for, for cricket on that particular day. So I am pretty um, proud of what has happened over the last few years and I'm um, definitely looking forward to 2018. Okay. As a young player coming through now and you're fighting to play alongside these international players, um, is that a spur that's a good thing, making teams more competitive in that way? Well, as a young player, you know, I have a little bit of problem with it because obviously um, the game has now gone into three parts. You know, you got test cricket, you got the 50 over game and now the T20 game. Um, sponsors and the monies that are involved in the T20 division of the game has made it the most lucrative form of the game. And what, it, for me, the negative about it is you got teenagers that are actually just concentrating on that. And, you know, if I was to rewind 25, 30, 35 years ago when I, you know, had my dream to play for the West Indies. You know, I wanted to be out there playing test cricket, even though there was um, some one day internationals, the West Indies was already double World Cup winners. But the, the fact that you wanted to play, you know, wear that burgundy cap, play in white clothes, play five days cricket, play alongside greats like Sir Vivian Richards, Gordon Greenwich, Desmond Haynes, that was my, my dream. I find now that that has loosened a bit. You know, and kids are concentrating, yes, and they would love to represent West Indies, but they also love to go to the IPL and the Big Bash and all the other big leagues around the world. And I believe that we've lost a little bit of um, the love for the game and what West Indies cricket really stands for and what has happened in, you know, the last 90 years of cricket in history. Um, and that's unfortunate, but, um, you know, hopefully we can pull things around and, you know, everybody could, you know, understand and measure the, the importance of each form of the game in terms of wanting to play for West Indies, wanting to represent your country. Um, but you can't fault a player if, you know, it's, it's a career now. It, it's financially, it's more viable now for people playing cricket as a, as a youngster to think about a massive future, think about fortunes and, and, you know, but that's just how life is. Are there any players that you would look out for in this tournament that you're excited to, to, to see, for instance? And what do you think would be key to success uh, for the Knight Riders and anybody else? Well, first of all, you know, it's not controversy, but uh, the likes of David Warner and uh, Steve Smith coming out to the Caribbean to play during a period of, um, of uh, where they were banned for a year, it's, it's interesting, you know, see how the crowd received them. I know they were just recently in Canada for that global D20 league. Um, it's I suppose the ICC and the Australian Cricket Board is, is quite comfortable with it. So, you know, you've got to leave that part of it there. But it's going to be exciting to see, you know, how they play, how they fit into, you know, our Caribbean League. Uh, but um, this has been carried by the regional players. 
even though there are international stars coming in and out of the last four or five years, it's been carried by the likes of Chris Gale, Sunil Narai, Paul Ad, Darren Sammy, Dwayne Bravo, Darren Bravo, all these guys make the, make the league what it is. I don't believe that there's any, um, of course the, the spectators love the fact that there's an international flavor, but you know, they come to see, you know, the regional players because you know, we are, we are actually very good at the T20 version of the game. You know, it's funny that, you know, 40 years ago, we were world champions in test cricket. We also world champions in, in the 50 over version of the game. Now that we, you know, we don't really sit at the top of any of those two forms of the game. But the T20 version of the game um, is one thing that, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of baffling to understand why we so good in T20 and can't transfer that form into other forms of the game. My reasoning for our success is the fact that I, today I believe the West Indies still produces the best young cricketers in the world, the most talented cricketers in the world. The T20 version of the game is very instinctive. It, you know, you got to react and you got to do things and, 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 and um, it's, you react into situations very quickly. And that's when true talent comes out. You know, when you can't, you're not allowed to think. And um, as you go into the fifth over in the test test level and attrition comes in, the mental strength comes in, I believe is that's where we, we let ourselves down a little bit. Nothing to do with the talent of the game. And it's just to do with the fact that we have not trained our minds to to be out there for five days and to, to handle pressure, to soak up pressure, understand the ebb and flow of, of international cricket test matches. And that's what we that's what we did, you know, back in Clive Lloyd's days or Sir Vivian Richards days, you know, we didn't just go and demolish players. We were demolished teams. We were under pressure on some occasions. We, you know, teams had us against the wall and we were able to fight through it over a longer, you know, version of the game. So for me, I don't think it has anything to do with the money aspects. I guess I think in terms of the makeup of the present day West Indian player, the talent is there, but I think the mental strength, we're not putting them in the right direction to ensure that they mentally strong, that their attrition level, their physical level could could withstand such um, mm -hmm. such competition. So you actually see the T20 as a very good indicator of natural talent, of raw talent. Yes, definitely. It's, it's, it's all about natural talent there. You know, you, guys like, you know, I know he's a bit older now, but um, Dwayne Smith, you know, scored a hundred on debut in test cricket, very attacking player, but fizzled out as, as you know, the other teams start learning about him. You know, he didn't pick up. He didn't understand that he needs to stay at another level. But still today, you know, you give him 15, 20 balls in a T20 game and he's a superstar. You know, he's going to get your 50, 60 runs. So that is that is just natural talent that that's you're seeing going on there. What do you think was key, the key factor that led to TKR winning last year? I think... Um, Playing at the Brown Lawrence Stadium <laughs> <laughs> Academy, no, not right. I think um, any team that has Sunil Narain has a fair factor. You know, they create a fair factor. Sunil has been an outstanding performer for TKR. Uh, I think he was with the Amazons before a couple of years ago. Um, of course, in, in the IPL and other leagues that he plays around the world, he's maybe one of the most feared bowlers. So having someone like that, you know, you have that psychological advantage. I think Dwayne Bravo has done very well in in man management in his team, getting his guys together. I'm not in the dressing room, I'm not a fly on the wall, but his personality lends itself to um, ha a very harmonious dressing room. You know, he's a fun-loving guy. You know, he's he's all he's you know love that side of it, and anybody will feel comfortable in his um, in his circle. I also believe that uh, the setup, the professional setup, administratively with the TKR. Being a part of um, KKR from India, I believe that they have a very professional setup, which again lends itself to players feeling very comfortable and going out and play. Good team, good chemistry. That's what you need. I mean, before, you know, when, when it first came out, you think that T20, you know, wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, that kind of game is just going to, you know, who have, you know, it's a luck game. There is a lot of strategy still left in that, even though it's come down to three hours of cricket. It's still a lot of strategy, tactical moves that you have to make. Batsmen and bowlers are now familiar with the game. So it's not just, you know, one of those games where guys can go out and smash it and teams are now getting 200 plus and, and other teams are chasing it, chasing it down. 
I mean, that's that just shows you that the level is pretty high.